much for joining me for this episode of All Lean Music and More. It's been a while since I posted. I know I said I'll be posting every Wednesday and Friday. And <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Life has been a little hectic for me lately. Um, just experiencing some personal stresses due to the coronavirus. And I just want to make sure that people are taking this seriously. I've just lost a family member to it. And I have two more family members who have contracted it. One who's recovered, the other who's still, we're still hoping that she can pull through. It's just, it's so stressful, just the weight of it all, the existential crises I've just been going through um, constantly ever since this started, really. But I really wanted to do this song, Don't Panic, because that's exactly what we should do, is not panic because we're not going to survive through this if we don't take care of ourselves emotionally and if we're not calm and just like knowing that we're here right now in this moment and all we can do is what we can do so yeah <laughs> basically um thank you for joining please like comment and subscribe um, I got new glasses, yes, hello. I did this video blind, I was playing, li I'm literally blind, but shout out to Zinnies. Actually, let me go and grab this, <laughs> like they're a sponsor or something, which they're not. So, Zinnies is so great because these frames are really cheap, literally the frames themselves were like $7, and then like I got this extra message on the insight printed it says momentum mori i really don't know if you can see that but hopefully you can it says momentum mori on the inside of the glasses and it comes with this really cool case here hello and a microfiber cloth like how cute is that if only they were a sponsor right um <laughs> If I post more consistently, I'm sure I could get some. But, um, yeah. I just wanted to show you guys my new glasses. Check in with you guys. Play you a cover song, because I haven't done covers in a really long time. And I really hope that you guys are being safe out there and having fun inside. Staying active. I've just been really trying to just get my eating right. My dieting right it's so easy for me to feel like I don't have to eat as much because like I'm not doing as much but there I my body still needs fuel and I'm still balancing like figuring out the nutrients which nutrients I need more than others and just in a balanced way it takes time but that's completely okay you know you can hop up in the comments and tell me what you want to see for the next episode whether you want to have a discussion on a certain social issue or shoot we can talk about religion spirituality we can do more makeup we can do more mukbangs mukbangs i haven't done a cooking video yet if someone's interested in seeing that i do have like nine plus years of restaurant experience as a cook line chef so I have, I feel like I have some knowledge to impart when it comes to cooking, especially um, vegan cooking. Um, in these times of like scarcity, So this is a segment where I'm going to talk about five existential crises that I've been going through um, during this time of great change and uncertainty. Um, my first existential crisis when this all hit was really how um, this um, pandemic will affect um, society in the future, you know. Like, just getting my glasses prescription was a completely different experience than I've ever had. Um, like, literally had to stand outside in a line. And the the um, associate just, like, leaned her head out the door. 
with the gloved hand like what do you need you know and, and it's like it's like I see even when I go to the store it's like everyone's avoiding each other so it's like there's definitely this there's less interaction and I know that that's necessary now but my questions are how I mean everyone's question is for how long of course and I feel like you know this is going not going to be something that ends in just a few months you know so it's like what will life oh my god is my baby missing an eye oh kind of like it deformed um but it's like what will life be like i feel like things will transform and be kind of like you know how china it, um is where everyone you know is wearing masks all the time but it's just going to be more like it's just going to be the social norm to be wearing like a mask and to um i just feel like it's just social distancing will become more of a norm in this way um it's just that's just a little theory of mine and also another thing that's i've been having existential crisis on is how the government has it, it has been handling it like <laughs> oh my gosh if this is not an apocalypse i don't know what is you know like it's the fact that 2017 the military had debriefed the president and his cabinet you know in their meetings that they have about a potential pandemic that could spread around this time and again in december of last year he was told of this when it was spreading in china so there was time to take this seriously and prevent it from even getting as far as it is right now we have death tolls like getting up to a million now one million and donald trump is still playing favorites with states and governors who listen to him and kiss his butt cheeks to so that he can get elected whatever if there's even an election to have and it's all just for the economy. So he wants the stock market to look so great. Wants everything to open back up. And Georgia, Governor Kemp is only doing whatever Trump is doing. Like literally Trump says we open up. Kemp says we open up. It feels like some Republican governors are just kissing butt, you know. And it's like you don't get some states are even being denied ventilators and supplies that they actually need. Trump has turned away help from the National um, Freaking Health Union or whatever the F. I can't remember. The National Health Organization. They are offering us money and supplies to help us. But you know what Trump said? No, we don't need that. We'll make our own. We have it all our own. Blah, blah, blah. So great. It's just like the hubris. I feel like it's going to be our undoing. And if anything... I feel like since he's in cahoots with Putin and whatever, there's like best friends. It really makes sense to me to destabilize a country. You put a leader in that seems to be so ineffective that everything just falls apart. I mean, it's like he's literally doing things to make our country fall apart. But you, because he's going to be fine because he's been paid off by everybody who else who has their hand in the pot. He's been paid off by Putin and the Russian Mafia, too. And who, I mean, it's not like they have the best in mind for America. Like, if you guys heard that Obama was being paid by Putin and the Russian Mafia, would you be like, yeah, I feel safe. I feel like my country isn't being handed over to an enemy because I don't. <sighs> my third existential crisis that i'm going through right now is as a business owner what the f am i supposed to do my business me and my fiance's business black quasar entertainment is centered around bringing people together at events cooperating big cooperative forces and if we're social distancing we just can't do that so as business owners we have to figure out other ways to to make income to other ways to keep our brand alive in this time and 
I'm still brainstorming on ways to do that, honestly. I don't have any magic answers. I really don't. But it, it's just like, and then what does that mean for the future? So what does Black Quasar Entertainment look like next year? I don't know. Because really, we, you know, we're getting into festivals. We want to get into festivals, like our own festivals. We want to start doing our own festivals. And we, we can't do that. So that's just another thing that's just like, what the F? Um, the fourth existential crisis I've been having is um, not working. Literally, because I, I also have a job. I worked at LA Fitness and I was laid off. Because I was on the kids... I'm the babysitter in the kids club where kid, the parents come, they drop their kids off and I watch their kids. I sit there and I just look at their kids and I'm like, hey, don't do that. You know, like just make sure they don't get too rambunctious on the playground. Well, of course, since the schools were let out, it would be irresponsible for a company to just, ugh, my lashes keep brushing up against my glasses. It would be irresponsible for a company to host groups of children in its facilities when schools aren't even doing that so that's a liability so that was laid off and I got my last check like a few weeks ago um I tried to they told me to apply for unemployment or unemployment insurance and when I did it said on my own when I applied it said that I would, would receive zero dollars a week a month is that that's what I qualified for. I qualified for zero dollars. So um, I tried to go back and appeal it. And when I did that, it stopped me. It stopped the process. And it said that I, uh, my employer had applied for unemployment for me. So I was like, okay. So I just been waiting. And then I got like another document in the mail. Like it was like kind of like a proof of the layoff basically that I could hand in to the um, to the freaking office that does not, to the unemployment office. But of course, you know, you can't go up there in person because they're not taking people. So I guess this piece would actually help me maybe, but I, I don't know. And nothing's really clear or certain. I've checked my email. I haven't gotten any more new emails. I, um, I've even, um, I go on my employee portal, portal website and when I log in, it says that it's an inactive account. So I can't even get more information directly from the employer. So I'm just, I'm freaking out because like I don't have any income coming in. And um, I'm, I'm lucky that my fiance is an essential worker and he still works, but not as much because, you know, everything's closing down. As So it's just... It's just a scary time because you can really be left with no money. And if you don't have a support system around you, I, I feel really concerned for people who I know are out there who don't have a place to stay, who, um, who don't usually have enough money to get food in the first place, or, you know, who are just living day to day because this is not just a living day to day situation. You have to be able to stock up on food. And you have to be able to like just stay healthy and just be where you are, you know, be in one place. And um, just the fact that I don't have any um, income coming in right now is um, a very stressful, concerning thing. And I'm just hoping that this unemployment thing works out or this stimulus check comes through or something i hope that something positive happens in my finances because um it, i don't think that things will go well if they stay on this track for like the next six months so last but not least my fifth existential crisis that i'm having is my freaking music career what what is it now you know Am I strictly now just a recording artist who can't even go to a studio because I'm social distancing? So I just have the music that I have on Bandcamp. And now that I don't have any income, I can't pay for the distribution to get it on Spotify. But that's my goal. It's just I'm going to get my music out and distribute it. 
but what really hurts is that I can't perform anymore like how I used to I haven't been on the stage haven't been on a mic haven't my my long-term goal was eventually like to be able to go on tour you know like before all this happened I was singing with bands yo man you know you have you ever heard of 16 bullets like I was up being a part of a project as a, a female lead for a band and like it was gonna be great you guys like we had covers classic rock like it was just going to be amazing and now like I have so many shows that were set up for April that I was super excited about. I was going to work Punk Black, Leslie Boo Grand. like these are all names that I respect highly in the um in the Atlanta alternative music scene okay and it's just like for all of it to just be stopped because of the incompetence of our government and because of the carelessness of so many people who don't care to take it seriously or it's just that honestly people have been lied to for so much that for so long people have been lied to that they don't believe in facts anymore they don't know the difference between facts and fake news and all i gotta say to that is watch tyt at least do that because like it's just not safe to be going out right now. It's not safe to be going out having parties. I don't care if it is a quarantine party. It doesn't make sense because then you can go home. Or I don't know who you live with, but like if you live with other family members or you live with a person who's going to be around family members, it doesn't matter if the people that you hang out with are showing symptoms or not. They can be not asymptomatic not showing any symptoms at all no coughing nothing and they could still be a carrier for it and they could still pass it to you you could be also be asymptomatic and be a carrier for it and pass it to someone who is not equipped to handle it and that could kill that person so that is your civic duty that's your responsibility and that's the responsibility that i take upon myself to make sure that I'm not spreading anything I, and it's like I have to go out to get food because like money it, it's not like I had a huge stockpile of money when I started when all this started so like when money comes as it comes in I can get more food and like supplies and stuff like that so when I do go out I make sure I take precautions like but honestly it's airborne like it's in the air so it's like as soon as you get in the building like there's a high percentage chance that you've already breathed it in. So, with saying all that, those are my five existential crises that I'm going through. I really just want to be an artist again, and I just want to sing and host events like I used to. Um, those were good times, but these are different times. But the best thing to do is to not panic, meditate, stay active. And we can get through this one way or another. And please stay informed. Please watch The Young Turks. Please watch that. That's at least one trustworthy news channel on YouTube. All right. This is All In Music and More. I shall see you guys next time. Bye. And this is All Lean Music and More, and we just want to thank you for watching. Uh, press that like and subscribe button. It, it would you know, be very appreciated. Yeah, and also make sure you hit that notification bell mm. so that you know next time when we're posting every Friday and... Wednesday? Hey, <laughs> we'll be here for you. Mm. Bye.